So uh, uh, let's talk about Milestone 4 first. So with, with Milestone 4, you are actually creating uh, uh, two classes out of the item class that you had. The implementation is very simple. That's why we have only four days for it, OK? Uh, it's pretty straightforward to, to, to work with it. The first one is a non-perishable one. That is the minimum amount of thing that you need to do. The other one, you have to do more uh, um, uh, overriding. This one is only one. So what a non-perishable item is, is essentially an item with only differences that it finalizes the right uh, method of the item. So a non-perishable one doesn't have an expiry date. Uh, and the only thing you do to make it concrete is to um, implement the, I, uh, the pure virtual function item type. And the item type for the non-perishable just returns the character n. That's it. So you create a function that returns n. So it identifies this uh, item to be a non-perishable. Doing so when you are overriding the right, what you need to do is to finalize the right of the item. To finalize the right of the item as a non-perishable, you should, it, first of all, you call the right of the parent. There's no problem with that. You, first, you write, call the right of the parent. And then you check to see if the item is in a good state. If it is in a good state, you continue printing whatever it's supposed to get printed, which means having an up non-applicable for the date section if it's in a list mode, uh, or just closing the, uh, the form mode, uh, put the underline of the form mode. So if it's in a list mode, you just print uh, an unapp not applicable and you close it down. Obviously, you don't go to no line because it's a list one. Um, and for the form mode, for the form mode, you print the, uh, the closing under the uh, specifications of the item, and you're done. And, but if the object is, is, is not in a good state, you just print uh, you just uh, uh, printed the right of the base method, and that takes care of printing the error message and everything, because we designed the system that way. If anything is wrong with the item, item prints the error message instead, right? So when you are printing the base message initially, if it's in an error state, it's going to show whatever is wrong with the, with the item. Other than that, uh, everything's good. So if the object is not in a good state, you don't print anything extra. You just ignore anything, everything. <clears throat> That's the uh, non-perishable item. The perishable item uh, has more work to do. Um, first of all, because it's perishable, you need to add an attribute to it that is a date attribute. So it needs to have a date attribute to hold the expiry date. So that's the first thing that you're adding to it. Then you're going to implement, obviously, the pure virtual function to make it concrete, which means the item type over here returns a single character called P. So that P thingy over there uh, simply um, uh, identifies this to be a perishable. And I'll explain why when we are going further. So the input and output methods for the read, what you do, you invoke the read of the base class. If everything's good, then you're going to print this prompt and, <clears throat> and read the date that you have. So you extract the date from the ice tree. And date knows how to deal with itself. So after this is done, then you check the date. If date is in a good state, life is beautiful, you just set the date. If date is not in a good state, then you set the error message of the item to the error message of the date. So when we are printing the item, it shows what went wrong. OK? So again, you invoke the read of the base. The base is read. Done. Uh, um, then you check to see if everything went OK. So you check to see if it's in a good state. If it is. You, you, know, you, can, you create a local instance of date, and you simply get that from the user. If everything goes well, you set the expiry date to the date that you read. If it doesn't go well, you set the error message of the item to the error message of the date, and you get out. 
and that takes care of everything. So the caller of read can later on check to see if item is in a good state or not. If it is in a good state, continues whatever it's supposed to do. And if it's not, the error message is going to get printed. Write works exactly like the other one. The difference is that uh, first you invoke the write as you did, but instead of not applicable, you put print one space, you print the date, another space, and a barcode, and, you're, and, a, and a bar character, and you're done. And if the object is in a for mode, you print expiry date, you go to new line, you print the date, go to new line, and you close, and you go to new line. So that's the right. <clears throat> for load, what you do, you invoke the load of the base class. Let me just... Yes, yeah, so for load, you invoke the, the load of the base class. Then you check to see if the, I, the, the item is in a good state and also check to see if iStream failed or not. So if they're both OK, and again, in a local uh, um, date uh, uh, instance, you uh, set uh, the that date to date only because we don't want any uh, uh, minutes and uh, second uh, hours and minutes to it. Then you ignore one character to ignore the comma because now you are loading. You you read the item now there is a comma and then you have to read the date. So you ignore one character. Then you extract the the date from I stream, which is essentially I F stream. You extract it from IF stream and you check to see if the read was successful. If everything was good, you set the date of the object again to the date that you read. And if it's not good, you set the error of the object to the error of the date. And uh, you set the I stream into a fail state. And you get out. When I say I stream, I mean IF stream because load is essentially for the file. And that's it. So that uh, completes the, the load. And save is uh, very simple. You just simply invoke the save of the base class. And if everything's good, you insert a comma. And then you insert the date, and you're done. It simply adds a comma and a date. And date knows how to ex uh, insert itself into I OF stream. So it's going to print a comma and an OF stream, and everything's done. So. Uh, how we actually tested this was like this. So for, uh, with the testers, um, uh, the tester for Milestone 4, let me actually bring Milestone 4 up so I can actually show you what the test is, tester is for it. For some reason, my Internet Explorer comes very late. I don't know why it checks for network or something. Uh, there we go. So, so milestone four. Was it? All right. So, for the tester, when we look at the tester, where is the tester? Tester. So I wrote it in two separate functions. That is non-perishable and perishable. You can comment perishable when, you do, when you're done with non, and comment the function and just test it that way, OK? And the test, uh, let, me, let me bring it over here so I can show you the files. So the files I created, they are input files and output files. The reason for it is that when an item is reading itself, it assumes the data is beginning from SKU. That's why, for example, for non-perishable that we are doing, this will be the data. So it starts from SKU. It doesn't have an identifier at the beginning. It doesn't 
Why it doesn't have that one? Because it's the caller function's responsibility to identify what is supposed to be read. When you are in milestone five reading the data file that is mixed of different types, first you read one character, you check. If that, that character is P, you instantiate a perishable. If that char character is N, you instantiate a non-perishable. And then tell to object to read yourself. And because you already extracted one character, the rest will be read. That's why it happens like this. So read of an item, perishable or non-perishable, assumes that the reading starts from the SKU. That's why the tester is like that. And if you look at the perishable, is the same thing, input of it. Uh, it starts from the SKU. But when it actually generates the output, that's a different story. So in main, let me just uh, uh, comment the perishable and run it. Not there, commented here. Oh, it is already, because it's non-perishable, so um, let me just comment this one. All right, so um, run it. Okay, so let's put this one up here, and this one's going to go on left. And let's see if it's going to fit. So uh, first, it's going to print it, uh, a div over there to, to kind of uh, draw a line. Then uh, the non-perishable test goes like this. So um, uh, I create an array of 10 non-perishables. Then I open an IF stream that is the input and open an OF stream that is for the output. Then I'll read one at a time, and I ignore uh, the backslash and afterwards, because uh, the reading, uh, I need to skip the backslash, and it doesn't do it. So I read, and I ignore a backslash. And if that is a success, I'm going to write it in a file. And I keep going like that to the number of the data that I have. So it's going to be written and closed. Then I'm going to go in list mode. And I'm going to display what I, sh what I read. And these are the stuff that I read from the file. And be re please appreciate it that it's actually written in a file now. And then I'm going to uh, uh, another, uh, draw another line, and this time show it in a form mode. So as you see, this uh, line underneath is written by the right. So this is written by the item. And this is added by the non-perishable. This is written by the, uh, by the item. And this is written by the non-perishable. OK? And it keeps going like this. Oh, where is it? Sorry. And prints them and closes it. Then it, go, it opens the, uh, the, non the, the one that it just outputted into a file. And character by character, it's going to print the values. So it's going to take a long time. So I'm going to just do it like this and say, go to cursor, run to cursor. So as you see, when it's writing, because item is designed to write to call the, the item type pure virtual function, the latest version of it will be called. Because it's a non-perishable, it tags it as n at the beginning. So later on, when you want to read this, you read one character, and you know what to instantiate to read the rest. That's the whole idea about the uh, pointers of a base pointing to a child and the latest versions of the functions being called. And the other one, it works exactly the same way. But the difference is that because in the other one, you are overloading almost, uh, you are overwriting, overriding, my apologies, um, almost everything. Uh, because of that fact, uh, because of that fact, it tests the data entry and everything like that, too. So when we run it, It is almost identical to the other one. So it comes in here. Again, the same thing. Creates 10 perishables, opens the input, opens the output, 
and it reads them one by one and writes it into a file. But then what it does, it asks you to enter something from the entry to see if actually the C in that you are doing, the extraction is overloaded properly. This is the read method being invoked now. So when I press F10 over here, it actually asks. So again, please do not enter these things manually. Just double click and right click and enter. Okay, double click, right click, twice, enter. Double click, right click. If you are on Linux, you do one right click, but here you have to do two. Double click, double click, two right clicks, enter. Double click, two right clicks, enter. Double click, two right clicks and enter. And now the value is read and that will be written into the file too. So the last thing that we read will be written into a file. And then it's gonna list everything. And as you see, the last one that was milk is added to the file too. So this is what you added. Then it does it uh, like form. So again, this is now added to the form by the perishable, and this is what is added to the list by the perishable. So these are done. And then obviously it's going to print the, the, the content of the file. And that's what we're going to have in a file with the milk at the end. That's the last one that you added. And that's milestone four. This is very, very simple thing to do. It's not going to take you more than a day to do it. Therefore, you have four days. So that was milestone four. Any questions about milestone four? Yes. Wow, you remember the lineup. Here? Or in the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, what does ignore return? I stream reference, correct? So, if you put an I... So, if I had it like this in here, if I had it... while input, okay? Then I would say, input that, and then I would say, ignore. Then I would say, if input, Would you have any problem with this? I'm saying, is input in a good state? It says yes, I come in. I'll try to read and I ignore. If everything goes okay, input remains in a good state, correct? So it's written in a file. And then it comes back up. Is input in a good state? And it continues. You're okay with this? I'll, I'll explain, give me two seconds. So input in a good state, it means it's I stream, right? It's IF stream. It means it is not, it is essentially, it means not input dot fail. <laughs> it means the read was successful. If the read is not successful, it means I hit the end of the file, right? So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay? So that's that. Now, instead of writing all this. I, I can put it over here. I, I'll, um, so in here, I'm going to say copy, um, and I'm going to add it to this stage no, uh, rev, uh, overview. Okay. So essentially, uh, I'm going to put this actually in the. Let me just put it over here. I'm going to put it in two four four overview. We never needed that, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put over here MS5. And in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to call it 
Pardon me? Oh, yeah, MS Form. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. While explained main.cpp, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to rename it afterwards. So uh, essentially, this. So now I'm a C programmer, right? So we need to we need first of all we know that the operator. Uh, uh, um, uh, conversion operator for boolean is overloaded for if stream and it returns not fail correct so so because it returns not fail if i do it like this it will still work correct correct then i would say okay if i extract this into the what I want to read the outcome of this one is input correct so I don't need to put that one over there I'll put it over here correct and I know that ignore by itself returns the reference of the input correct so I'm gonna put this one over here too obviously I'm gonna need a uh, parentheses to kind of put an emphasis on it so that's going to be the same. Now, if it fails, nothing's going to happen, so I don't need an if statement. Therefore, such an ugly, humongous thing is shortened to that. OK? Does that make sense? OK. So, so in here, I'm going to say same as above, but ugly. OK? So I'm going to save this. So it's going to go into the uh, explanation of how, to, how it works. OK? Thank you. That was a very good question. So if, let me actually fix the overview thingy that I put over here. So project overview, because I, I, I put it MS5 by mistake. Thank you very much for, for noticing that. So that's going to be MS4. And done. OK, so that's that. So that's MS4. Any other question about MS4? To clear? Yeah, if I wanted to use it afterwards, of course. But I didn't want to use it. Uh, yeah, she's absolutely right. Just take a look at this. If I actually, like if in here, if I wanted to do something afterwards, where is my while loop? If I wanted to do something with that input thingy, I would do it. I would, if I wanted to read again, I would clear it. I don't need it. I just want to close it and be done with it. So I closed it. So everything's done. But you're absolutely right. Uh, because it's failed, if I needed to use it later for something else, because later I, I, I reopened the output, uh, no, actually, I didn't even reopen the output. Oh, sorry, uh, input. Because I closed input and reopened it, so the whole status starts from scratch, and this is uh, not in a fail mode anymore. It's not the same file anymore. But yeah, sure. If you wanted to reuse it, then we need to do that. Any other question? Suggestion? Objection? All right, so that's milestone four.